a double homicide at an RV park, extreme weather that's affecting travel, diesel emissions testing for any motorhome entering California, a new partnership that will make cell phones work in the wilderness, RV prices rise again, and a reversal of a major court ruling that could affect anyone who wants to record video in national parks and on other public lands. It's time for your RV and camping news roundup. We have a ton to get to. That's what I get for taking a week off. So let's dive right in. First up, we've been following the last couple of years changes in laws regarding shooting video in national parks. It began with popular YouTubers Kara and Nate who were fined for filming in parks after the fact when the Park Service got a hold of some video of theirs with drone footage in it. It's illegal to fly drones from national parks, but Kara and Nate said the footage wasn't theirs. In fact, I use stock drone footage all the time in these videos from national parks that was taken before drone laws went into effect. But Kara and Nate faced a fine for filming commercial video in a national park, which stems from a law that requires the federal government to charge fees for filming on public lands for the benefit of the taxpayers. It makes sense. You don't want a Hollywood movie filming in the middle of Yosemite without going through a permit process and paying the people a hefty fee for the inconvenience, if it's even deemed appropriate at all. But that law was written pre-YouTube, and now anyone with a cell phone can make content for profit. Actually, it can be argued that the simple act of posting to YouTube or TikTok or Facebook is a profitable endeavor for the social platform itself, whether you make a dime off it or not. The National Park Service knew this law was dicey and has avoided any real litigation in order to stave off an unfavorable ruling, often settling with creators or giving them a warning as long as they take the video down. So last year, when Gordy Price shot his small film on Park Service lands and received a fine, he sued. And he won a case that proved the federal government's commercial filming law and lots of state and local laws unconstitutional. The judge said essentially that making laws related to the content of free speech is unconstitutional, meaning that speech for money is not by itself a reason someone should have to pay a fee and get a permit. The federal government is free to set rules about equipment and staff and resource use, but saying that simply because the intent of the content was for money is not a good enough reason for restricting free speech, according to this judge. It makes sense all news agencies receive payment for their work, even nonprofit ones like NPR. So when that ruling was handed down in January of 2021, the National Park Service changed its rules to allow anyone to film with no more equipment than what they can carry on their back at all times, and no more than a single small tripod to set on the ground. But at the same time, they began an appeal process. And last week, in a two to one decision, the US Court of Appeals, DC Circuit, reversed the ruling. Now again, we're in a situation where before standing outside Yosemite National Park's visitor center, using a cell phone to record commentary on our national parks that will air on advertisement supported YouTube channels, an individual must obtain a permit and pay a fee. Before filming a protest on the National Mall, tourists must obtain a permit and pay a fee if they have any inkling that they might later make money from this footage on social media. And when the filming is spontaneous, these individuals will be criminally liable and face up to six months in prison, even though they could not possibly have obtained a permit ahead of time. And if that all sounds like a dramatic interpretation of the ruling, know that those are the exact words of the third judge in his scathing dissent. And worse, the ruling goes further to define the mere act of recording video as not speech at all, saying that it's just a non-communicative step in the process. The implications of the U.S. appellate court setting that precedent that shooting video on cell phones is not free speech, they're obvious. This ruling could be used to establish laws that make filming a police officer illegal, for instance. And the process isn't as simple as going to a visitor center and paying a fee either. It takes several weeks and it costs at least $150 per day to film, more if you plan on filming more than a couple hours, and you can get denied for lots and lots of reasons. I asked the Washington National Mall and Memorial Parks Division of Permits Management what they plan to do now that the ruling has been reversed, and they say they're awaiting further guidance from the Department of the Interior's lawyers on how to proceed. Until they get that guidance, the rules will stay as they are. But visitors to public lands who plan to take video and publish it on money-making platforms should be on the lookout for new rules and regulations to come. Big news from Starlink and T-Mobile for anyone who travels to remote locations without cell service. 
The two communications companies are joining forces to make T-Mobile phones work even when there's no cell tower nearby. Leveraging Starlink, SpaceX's constellation of satellites in low Earth orbit, and T-Mobile's wireless network, there may be soon near-complete coverage in most places in the U.S. Well over half a million square miles of the U.S., in addition to vast stretches of the ocean, are untouched by cell signals right now from any provider. The companies think they can fix this with the phone already in your pocket. The vast majority of smartphones already on T-Mobile's network will be compatible with the new service using the device's existing radio. A new network will be broadcast from Starlink's low Earth orbit satellites using T-Mobile's mid-band spectrum nationwide. This true satellite to cellular service will provide nearly complete coverage almost anywhere a customer can see the sky. The top of Denali, out in the middle of Lake Michigan, you get the picture. And you won't have to be a Starlink customer, just have a T-Mobile phone. Now, don't get too excited. This isn't going to be regular cell service. It's going to kick off with just text messaging to begin with. But think of the emergency implications of that. Anyone hiking in the wilderness will be able to send a text message by the end of next year when they're in a dangerous situation. Eventually, the companies plan on providing voice and data coverage, but that's likely to cost more and to be very limited. At first, this will be a US-only endeavor, but the CEOs are issuing an open invitation to the world's carriers to collaborate for truly global connectivity. More in a moment, including an update on RV pricing, a new solo stove product, and new rules for motorhomes entering California. But first, this episode is sponsored by the folks at RV Mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. Abby and I have been using the Dream Foam Series mattress six months now, and we couldn't be happier. We're sleeping better, and we're able to customize it to fit our exact needs. RVMattress.com offers 120 night sleep trials, the ability to pick different sizes and thicknesses depending on your personalized sleep needs, plus their products are toxin-free, made in the USA, and incredibly simple to set up. We were able to have ours delivered to the campground, and within hours of unboxing the mattress, it was fully expanded and ready for us to sleep on. RVmattress.com offers free shipping and is currently extending 20% off to the RV Miles community. When you use RVmattress.com slash RVmiles and use the promo code RVmiles, that's RVmattress.com slash RVmiles with promo code RVmiles for 20% off. Our thanks to RVmattress.com for supporting this channel and to you for supporting our sponsors. Now back to the news. A double homicide took place last Wednesday at the Thousand Trails Orlando RV Resort, according to the Lake County, Florida Sheriff's Office. With over 1,000 sites, TTO is a winter home to many full-time RVers. Justin Lamar Jones, 41, has been taken into custody. Jones allegedly killed his stepson in a travel trailer along with another individual and sexually assaulted a third person who escaped and called police. The identities of the victims have not been released. Jones was found by deputies later in the day parked in a public's parking lot and has been charged with two counts of first-degree murder, sexual battery, and kidnapping. Folks looking to buy an RV have been following the roller coaster of MSRPs, discounts, and pricing closely over the past year or two now. We thought perhaps we saw the peak a few months ago with a slowdown in sales and that a reduction of prices, even if a gentle one, had begun. But in the month of July, the last month we have data for, something crazy happened prices went up again. Watching the auction lanes is the best place to get an idea of nationwide pricing, and Black Book, who publishes RV appraisal guides, says the average selling price for motorized units was just under $80,000, up $6,000, or 8.2% over June. Towables came in at $21,000, up $1,000, or 4.7%. One year ago, the average motorhome sold for $75,000 at auction, and the average towable unit brought about $24,000. Used prices are tied very closely to new prices, so overall right now you're paying a little less for a trailer than you were a year ago, and significantly more for a motorhome. A lot of people had hoped for an influx of used RVs as the economics of holding on to one became more difficult for some people, but it seems that the reduction in new RV sales is actually limiting the number of used RVs going back into the market. So many used RVs come from people trading in their old one, and auction volume has dropped because trade-ins have dropped. The RV industry does recognize that the market is softening for new sales though, and has revised its estimates for units produced in 2022 and 2023. RV wholesale shipments are projected to reach 498,800 units by year-end 2022, 
and 419,000 units next year. That still puts 2022 around the second or third best year on record, but that's a huge drop in production for next year, bringing the industry back to pre-pandemic 2019 shipment numbers. The RV Industry Association says that 2023 will still be in line with the 10-year average, which is considerably above the 20-year and 30-year numbers. A record 600,240 RVs shipped in 2021. Turning to weather and disasters that may affect your travels, extreme flooding events are still impacting tourism in many places from Moab to Zion to Mississippi. Make sure to keep checking forecasts and be extra careful about parking your RV in washes in the West that can be dry for months and turn into raging rivers in minutes. An intense heat wave is underway in the West and is expected to continue for another week. Californians are being asked to reduce electricity consumption for fears of power grid failures, which besides the obvious issues, can cause wildfires. The National Weather Service says the Southwest heat wave is the worst and longest so far this year and will stick around for another week. Speaking of California, the California Air Resources Board, or CARB, has debuted its mobile smog check equipment at the Port of Los Angeles. More than 1,200 trucks were screened to help make owners and operators aware of the new smog check requirements for heavy-duty vehicles in the state. That includes motorhome owners, whether or not their RV is registered in California. The program's due to begin phasing in January 1st, and all heavy-duty trucks, buses, agriculture equipment, and personal motorhomes with a gross vehicle weight rating of more than 14,000 pounds will be subject to the program when traveling in California. The mobile check equipment will be deployed in various areas to screen for potential high-emitting vehicles operating on California roads. Eventually, you'll need to obtain a certificate of compliance to operate a heavy-duty diesel in the state. California has also finalized rules to ban the sale of non-electric cars and light trucks by 2035. That doesn't mean you won't still be able to buy a truck or a motorhome, but there will be different rules for lower weight vehicles. If you're not a Californian and you don't think this affects you, many states have trigger laws that directly follow California's vehicle emission rules. Over a dozen states are set to follow suit. Gasoline prices continue to slowly retract. Gas is down to a nationwide average of 382 for a gallon of regular after a high of 501 back in June. But after several weeks heading south, diesel prices have jumped again, up to 508 after getting down to 498 last week. Low inventories sent the national average diesel price in the United States back above $5 for the first weekly price increase in more than two months. Oilprice.com says that distillate fuel inventories in the Northeast are particularly low, with supplies of diesel fuel and heating oil in New England currently 63% below the five-year average, and that there's a growing fear that an extreme weather event could significantly disrupt distillate supply in the Northeast. The folks at Campendium have released a free Android version of their mobile app to pair with the Apple version. The crowdsourced and editorial curated campground listing site allows you to search for places to camp wherever you're headed in the United States, Canada, Baja, Mexico. RoadPass Pro members get access to premium features in the new app, such as cell coverage maps, smoke maps, elevation filters, and more. Use the code RVMILES10X for a discount. Solo Stove has announced a new fire pit, their smallest yet. The Mesa is a tabletop fire pit that is small enough to use wood pellets. You still get Solo Stove's low smoke airflow design in a very small package. It weighs less than two pounds, comes in six colors, and is selling for a reduced price of $79.99 on launch. There's a link in the description where you can check it out. Finally, I want to mention some upcoming events for RVers to put on your calendar, beginning this coming week with the RV Entrepreneur Roundtable in Montrose, Colorado. I'll be speaking there along with many other digital nomads. If you're someone who works from the road, consider joining us. You can also check out the RV Entrepreneur podcast for lots of great interviews with folks running a business from the road. America's largest RV show in Hershey, Pennsylvania kicks off on September 14th. It's the first big show of the new model year, so lots of visitors often get a first look at lots of new offerings from manufacturers. More than 1,300 RVs from 40 manufacturers will be on display. Next up is the return of the annual Elkhart RV Industry Open House, September 26, where manufacturers show their new models to dealers. It's not open to the public, but I'll be reporting from there and I'm expecting at least one big announcement on the front of electric RV so stay tuned for that. 
Finally, the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta kicks off October 1st. It's become one of the largest gatherings of RVers in the country, where hundreds of hot air balloons fly right over your RV just inches away, sometimes a little too close for comfort. It's sold out, but there's a waiting list available, and we hope to run into there. That's it for this week's RV and camping news. Make sure to hit the like button if you got something out of this video. Subscribe if you want more like this, and we'll see you on the next one.